is still another menacing phenomenon to tackle. In a nuclear blast, the mountain would transmit shockwaves directly to the buildings, injuring people and damaging sensitive computers. To combat these waves, engineers come up with their own version of shock absorbers. Giant springs three feet tall, nearly two feet wide, and weighing half a ton each. 1,319 springs will protect NORAD's buildings from any shock wave. No other structure has ever employed such an innovative shock absorption technique. It's a first in engineering history. Step by step, work on the rough steel structure of NORAD's interior buildings continues. When complete, each building will be interconnected, forming a basic grid pattern. It is inside this building, the Command Operations Center, that technicians will eventually install the brains of NORAD, its global surveillance system. In adjoining buildings, workers construct other features of this megastructure, including a medical clinic and convenience store. It's April 1964. Workers are 14 months into phase two of the project, NORAD's self-supporting city. 15 buildings are complete. Crews now begin work on the support systems. First, they build the power plant that will run the entire command post. The guts, six turbocharged diesel engines, the same kind used to power a battleship. Together, they can generate 10 megawatts of electricity, enough to power more than a thousand households. Next, crews load fuel and water into the five reservoirs they've already carved out. One reservoir holds one and a half million gallons of water for drinking and cooking. It's been three and a half years since NORAD's first official blast of dynamite. During this time, workers have overcome all kinds of obstacles. But the NORAD facility still lies vulnerable to one lethal menace. Radiation from nuclear fallout. With plenty of brawn, it's time to add the brains. NORAD gets wired with state-of-the-art technology. And now, the conclusion of NORAD on megastructures. By early 1965, the first two phases of the NORAD command center are near completion. With tunnels, interlocking buildings, four water reservoirs, a fuel supply reservoir, power plant, and ventilation system. Before the third and final phase can begin, installing the technical equipment that will be the brains of this military megastructure, one last detail must be addressed. In the event of a nuclear explosion, damaging shockwaves and thermal radiation can enter NORAD through three routes, the air intake delay ducts and the two tunnels. The tunnels are designed as blowaway areas. Shockwaves would travel in one way and out the other, but the air ducts lead directly into the NORAD complex. If a thermonuclear shockwave gets through these ducts, it could destroy the buildings. The solution? Create a safeguard called a blast valve. NORAD has 58 of them, weighing in at 8,500 pounds each. Inside this four-foot-wide tube is a movable seal that opens and closes the valve. When a nuclear blast goes off, it creates a change of air pressure. In less than half a second, NORAD's blast valves will automatically seal the air intake ducts leading directly to the facility. The contaminated air is then forced to go through a filtration system called a CBR filter. The fresh air that comes in is forced through those filters where we ensure that no radiation, no chemical agents or biological agents could get through into the complex. There is one more weakness at NORAD that engineers need to address. The entrance doors into the complex. Located along the tunnels, they must be able to seal off the facility during a nuclear blast. For this, engineers borrow a different design. The inspiration for their solution, a typical bank vault door. 
engineers create a mega version they call a blast door. It's three and a half feet thick and weighs in at 50,000 pounds. Hydraulic motors push a series of steel pins into the door frame for a lock more secure than any bank vault. Like the blast valves, the blast doors close automatically when a nuclear explosion creates a change in air pressure. With a lockdown system in place, NORAD is now equipped to seal itself off in the event of a nuclear war. The complex will stock enough water, fuel and food, including 72,000 meals, to continue its mission for a full 30 days without any help from the outside. By late fall 1965, all of NORAD's 15 buildings are assembled. The first two phases of construction are completed. It's time to launch the final phase of the project, installing the early warning and surveillance system inside the command center of the new NORAD megastructure. Although the details of this intelligence are classified, NORAD makes no secret about its primary mission, to track aircraft and missiles launched by known or suspected enemies. It's up to those manning this megastructure to identify any airborne weapons entering North America's airspace. Phase three has been a massive undertaking. Computer experts are in a constant race against advancing technology. But by the start of January 1966, the job is done. A Philco 200S computer is installed at NORAD's Command Operations Center, one of the fastest scientific supercomputers of its time in the world. The brains of NORAD are up and running at Cheyenne Mountain. On April 20th, 1966, more than six years after construction began, the NORAD Command Center closes up its old headquarters in downtown Colorado Springs and kicks off operations inside Cheyenne Mountain. The entire project cost $142 million. That's equivalent to more than $18 billion today. Hundreds of civilians work at NORAD alongside 600 enlisted personnel from the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, and Canadian military. From airmen to brigadier generals, NORAD is busy day and night, fully staffed in eight-hour shifts, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The cafeteria serves four meals a day, including one at midnight for those working the night shift. The underground work environment is significantly different. There are no windows at NORAD. In fact, the entire complex has a no-frills design that's been compared to the lower levels of a battleship. There are people who find it very difficult to work in this environment. If you never see the sun, if you never feel the breeze, uh, never see changes in temperature, it can be very difficult. The government has gone all out in outfitting this megastructure. NORAD was a statement to the world, in particular to the Soviet bloc, that the United States could be attacked, but they'd reply with a big stick. For 20 years, NORAD scans America's borders for airborne attacks from the Soviet superpower. Then, in November 1989, the U.S.'s greatest foe and NORAD's primary reason for being comes tumbling down. The Soviet Union, the enemy that moved North America to build an indestructible fortress, collapses. And the Cold War officially comes to an end. Many people have thought that NORAD, with the Cold War being over and there's being less of a potential possibility of an attack from the outside, that NORAD was obsolete. Okay, stand by. But is it? As the world situation changes, so does the mission of NORAD. NORAD now expands its mission of global surveillance to include missile threats from rogue nations like North Korea and Iran. Soldiers watch and warn of missile attacks from terrorists anywhere in the world. It's a mission that depends upon a complete overhaul. It'll be like a Volkswagen. It always looked the same for years and years, but they kept 
fine-tuning the engine, they would change some things on the inside, etc. Well, that was what they said about the mountain. Well, the mountain will always look the same from the outside, but we'll be fine-tuning it and be changing it on the inside to adapt to current needs. Needs that require the brains of NORAD, its top-secret supercomputer, to be constantly upgraded and updated. Even though NORAD surveillance systems are powerful enough to detect a four-inch long object in the Earth's orbit, that did not prepare the command post for the tragedies of September 11, 2001. On the morning of 9-11, we received intelligence that there might be an airliner specifically headed for Cheyenne Mountain. We closed the blast doors that day. The attack on NORAD turned out to be a false alarm. But the terrorist attacks of 9-11 forced NORAD to update its role and mission once again. It's imperative they revamp the center to prepare for, and more importantly, prevent unpredictable acts of violence from future terrorism. The threat has become much more asymmetrical, and by that I mean terrorism is out there now. The threat is no longer a, a bear, but it's a ball of snakes. On March 4, 2005, NORAD officials unveiled their largest renovation since the mountain fortress first opened in 1966, their newly refurbished command center. It was rebuilt within the existing rock chamber, carved out more than four decades ago. What you're about to see will show you we no longer need Hollywood to make our, our mission appear state-of-the-art and functional for its missions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to announce we are now officially open for business. This $15 million project took 17 months to build and doubled the command center size. In today's post-9-11 world, NORAD is a state-of-the-art facility that now features the latest in detection, surveillance, and warning technology. Any missile that's launched anywhere in the world will be detected by satellites and possibly by radar systems and they're all tied into one global warning computer system that we're able to monitor here in the Missile Correlation Center. Space Control Center Major Oldman are coming up in South Bay, first base control squad in morning. As a central command headquarters, NORAD's job is to assess the threat and coordinate the military force necessary to intercept or destroy the enemy. Officials now keep an even closer watch over the skies above the homeland. Every day, more than 10,000 aircraft are in the air over the U.S. at one time. Ever since the unforeseen airborne attacks of 9-11, any one of those planes could be a lethal weapon. We are the agency of last resort, and we really don't want to be involved, and if we are, then it's gone too far already. That said, uh, a quiet day here is a good day for us. fortress was built to pass the ultimate test to survive a nuclear catastrophe a test it may never face because it fulfilled its mission so well this is the most secure place you can be anywhere in the world a remarkable claim for a stronghold almost 40 years old the engineers who designed it had a unique vision to build a garrison where people could see out into every corner of the world, but where no one could see in. Hidden beneath 2,000 feet of solid granite, this military complex has faced many challenges over the years, including the rapid progress of computer technology, the unpredictable nature of an almost two-mile-high mountain, and the persistent threat 